This printer is huge. It's bigger than me. I'm so excited. Welcome to Art Business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a children's book illustrator. In this video, I'm going to do an unboxing and review of my brand new Epson WF7820 all-in-one printer. It's all-in-one, so it includes printer, scanner, fax, and photocopy. It's also a large size and it can print and scan uh, formats like 11 inches by 17 inches. Let's go! But right before we start, if you too would like to make a living with your art and you're interested in seeing more videos like this, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell. The bell sends you a notification every time I upload a new video and this way you're sure that you won't miss any of the advice. All right, let's get started. So I bought this machine mostly for the scanner, although having a color printer in the house is gonna come in handy for sure. But it's mostly for the printing that I'm gonna be using it and I was really due for an upgrade. Up until now, I've been using a very crappy Canon Lid 120, which is a very small, low quality, like entry level scanner that you can buy for about 60 bucks. It's definitely not an artist scanner, but it will do in a pinch. And uh, it was okay for me for a long time because I did mostly digital art for a very long time. But now I'm starting to add more and more watercolor into my work, so the little Canon will not do anymore. For one thing, it's really small. So if I have to scan large artwork, then I have to scan it in multiple pieces and collage it back together in Photoshop. Really a pain in the ass, so we were due for a change. So I decided to get the Epson WF7820 wide. It was only $279 in Canadian dollars too. So if you're in the US, it would be less than that even for you. And here's what came in the mail. out about this printer is the size. This thing is huge! I could literally fit in the box it came in. When I first took it out of the box, I was a little bit worried because I realized this thing definitely will not fit on my desk. Even if I remove the old Canon scanner, it will not help. It will not fit. However, that turned out not to be a problem because this printer is wireless. That is to say, you do have to plug it into the wall, but you don't have to plug it to your computer so you can put it away from it. So I was able to put this huge ass printer on a little shoveling unit that I have on the side of this room and voila! You could put it anywhere, even in the closet, so that's very handy. The second thing that stands out about this printer is the price. I was really surprised that it was only $279 in Canadian dollars, like that's barely 230 US dollars, really inexpensive. That's a lot less expensive than scanners of the same size that I was looking at. So at first I was a little bit worried that this might mean that it was a lower quality machine. And the only reason that I went ahead and looked more into this uh, particular printer is because I had a recommendation from an artist called Melissa Bailey. She's an amazing traditional artist. I will put her links in the description below for Instagram, for her website. She's amazing and she said she had this printer and it was really good. She even provided some test scans, raw scans. And uh, that really convinced me to give this machine a second look. It really did not seem to be a lower quality machine. So my theory is actually that because this is mainly a printer, that Epson is thinking that they will make most of their money in the sale of the ink cartridges. And that's how they're able to price the machine itself at a lower price point. With scanners only, they can't do that. So they have to price the scanner at a higher price point. So it seems counterintuitive, but the all-in-one printer that had more function was actually less expensive than a scanner of the same 
quality. And for me, since I'm going to be using mostly the scanner function, I'm not going to be printing much at all, just one little reference here and there, one little color test here and there, then it's turned out to be a really good deal. All right, but now, how does it actually handle? First of all, the installation. It was really easy and straightforward. The instructions are very clear and really <laughs> foolproof. You can't go wrong, they literally hold you by the hand for every single little step in the process. I had the machine running and doing my first scan test in less than 20 minutes, so yay! Next, scanning. So first of all, the flatbed is really huge with a surface of about 12 inches by 18 inches. Perfect for scanning a large format piece. I also really like their scanning software, Epson Scan Smart. It allows you to adjust every single setting manually and also to do a preview scan. You can use the autocrop function to scan multiple illustrations at once and they all end up into their separate individual files. Or you can scan the whole flatbed at once, of course. I decided to scan some old watercolors I had lying around because watercolors are notoriously hard to scan. But also, this way I could compare to my old scans of the same illustrations. I scanned all of my tests at 600 dpi, but this machine actually can go all the way to 9600 dpi. Wowzer! My scan tests really turned out very nice. Right away, you can tell just with the standard settings, nothing adjusted, it's not as blindingly bright as my old scans were. It's really good at picking up the pale, subtle colors, and it even picked up the texture of the paper. You can see in my old scan that all the colors were washed out, and some of the paler colors were completely erased but not in the new scan. Now, of course, for the final image, I would go in Photoshop and make this background a little bit wider. But that's really easy to do. We can do this in Photoshop in just about a minute. Whereas if the scanner erases some of the information that's in your original painting, if it completely does away with some of your paler color, that's something that's much harder to add in post-production, especially if you wanna keep that traditional look. So this is definitely much better. I also tested scanning a large 11 inches by 15 inches watercolor painting that I did and this scan turned out gorgeous. It picked out every single little color in the painting. Since I didn't have to piece it together like I normally do, in Photoshop I basically just cropped out the edges, brightened the thing a little bit and boom, it was done, it was perfect under two minutes. I cannot recall the last time a scan uh, fix like this took me less than two minutes. I was really impressed. So I'm very happy and I give the scanning A+. And lastly, I also of course tested the printing. Now, sadly, I don't have really high quality paper like photo paper or something like that on hand. So I had to test just on normal uh, printing paper. This is not ideal and the colors and quality would look much better on actual quality paper, of course. But still, even under those circumstances, the printing was really great. The printer spat this out really quickly and the colors were vibrant and accurate. It doesn't look pixelated or banded. For printing reference images or color tests at home, this is great. For professional quality prints and products for sale, I can't say for sure I would really have to test it with actual archival inks and archival paper to make sure, but from the quality of what I got just from the normal paper, I can say that it will probably give you a very, very decent product. Maybe not museum quality or anything, but definitely decent enough to get you a good start. If you print a lot though, just keep in mind that you will have to buy a replacement ink cartridges fairly regularly, so keep that in mind when you make your decision. So all in all, this is a very impressive machine, especially for such a small price. I'm extremely happy with it and definitely I would recommend it. I hope that this review was helpful to you and if you decide to get this printer, then make sure to let me know so we can geek out together. Now, if after watching this, you're itching to get started printing and selling your own products, then I have a free guide for you that you might enjoy. It's called 101 Etsy product ideas for artists. It goes over a ton of different ideas to get you inspired. It's completely free and I will leave the link to download that in the description below. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to help our small channel grow 
Thank you so so much for your support. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!